There we go. How we look, GB1? Excellent. <sighs> Breathe in that 2012 air. Wait, wait, what do you mean it's not 2012? What year is it, GB1? 2022? You didn't tell me we were... I thought we were agreed we weren't going to go any more hazardous timelines after the whole Titanic incident. Just give me a moment here. You try to put one of these on by one hand. Ah, there we go. But why'd you put us in this timeline? For, for dramatic effect. GB1, we're solving a 200-year-old mystery while building a Templar Knight. I think that's more than dramatic effect. Oh, hey, look, our friends are here. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building the Metal Earth Premium Series Templar Knight and telling you everything you need to know to get this thing built, like where the tricky bits, how to form all of our pieces, and, of course, put them together, which, in this particular case, is a lot harder than you might have thought of before, especially when it comes to these older Metal Earth Premium models. Now, while also doing this, we're going to be solving a 200-year-old metal model mystery. And I'm going to tell you, our first clue, I think, is just over here in the main hall. Let's see if we can get over there. The hardest part here is being a time traveler in 2022. Okay, let's see. Ah, yes, look, right here. See, plaque, plaque, trains, bed stuff. What do you think? See, told you, it's easy. Old train stations, bent metal, trains, old train station. That's the first place we gotta go. Uh, while I make my way there, uh, why don't you guys get down to the workbench and take a look at that? There we have it, all seven pages needed to build the Templar Knight. Just taking a quick little look around here, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of parts, but this model does stand pretty tall still. I wonder if that will affect our details. The first thing we're going to take a look at is our legs, how to shape them, and talk about some of the troubles you might run into. Next, we'll touch on our head and body, and talk about how to get those formings just right. And finally, we'll form our arms, attach them onto our body, and finish up all the small details like our sword. With all of these cylinders and small details needing to be shaped, we're going to need some tools. Let's check in with our tool expert to see what he has to say. Uh, just don't mention anything about the other mystery. We need to keep that one quiet. Timothy? The Metal Earth Premium Series Templar Knight stands tall in any collection, but not just any collector can build it. Much like the mysteries that surround the Templar Knights, this model has its own tricks. To achieve an acceptable level of success, I recommend... Nippers, tweezers, fondant tools, dapping punches, and... A Bender 1.0 tool! <clears throat> Why are you on a train yard? Thanks, Timothy. Now, as always, these are just our suggestions. You never need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools makes everything a lot easier for you. Now, we've looked at everything and we have all of our tools. There's only one thing left for you guys to do. And that's to press that like and subscribe button. We're currently trying to get to the 4,000 subscriber mark and really could use your help. Uh, but uh, don't worry at all. There's no, no pressure or anything. It's just we have a time machine and I jump into your timeline and press it for you anyway. Uh, but again, no worries at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no pressure. Just the red button there. Oh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. We have all kind of cool projects coming on in the future. And knowing that you're going to be here is actually really awesome. Now, uh, we are here at the old train park. And not just for free beer, but also because of the next clue that we need to figure out. Now, uh, the nice Templar are really, really good at the whole building thing. And they build really awesome structures. But one thing they also did was put the clues inside of metal for 3D metal modelers just like us. You see these old train tracks right here, these really tiny tracks? Well, that's no coincidence, my friend. You see this little rock here? Watch what happens when I tap it. Hear that sound? Yes, that sound says City Hall, and that's exactly where we're going to next. You guys go to the workbench, check out a couple pieces. I got some running to do. The Metal Earth Premium Series Templar Knight is a metal model that a lot of people choose as their first step into human figures. Forming a human shape out of metal can be hard because of all of our unique shapes, long appendages, and overall awkwardness. How does the Templar Knight attack all of these? Let's find out together. The first thing we need to do is leg day. And uh, don't worry, GB1 spin class was completely canceled. Uh, 
we start with parts one and two. Right off the bat, you'll notice that part one is oddly shaped, and that's because we're going to be forming this into cylinderous shapes. In this case, I'll use my dapping tool and press into the part. You will notice the metal starts to curl, and that's exactly what we want. We need every part of our metal to be bent so we get a good finish later. After forming the side just enough to fit part two, we can bring our first two parts together. Here is where I messed up. I tried to take the tabs and hide them. This caused a lot of pain and suffering. Unfortunately, after messing about for a bit, I went back and bent the tabs the other way. Yes, you can see the tabs, but with the metal being silver and the whole texture bit, the tabs tend to blend in pretty good if you ask me. Next, let's touch on our feet and knees. These parts are way easier to hide the tabs. Looking at part three, we can use that same method from before to get the part rounded, then connect our tabs from the inside. You can make this even easier on yourself by bending the tabs 90 degrees before inserting them into the insertion holes. Look at that! Okay, our foot is made very similar, but we need to make sure it's narrow. Squeeze the sides just a little bit, but not too much. We don't want to get any creases. Little bit more, and there we go! Okay, lastly, let's look at these thighs. Like with part one, we'll need to roll part five too. The upper parts will need to be formed separately. Let's take our tweezers and match the backs and get these tabs in place. There we go! Now we can use part nine to connect our legs. A couple of folds, and now we can move on to our head and chest. After our legs, this stuff might seem a little easy. Part 13 gets bent the same way our legs did. It's super important to pay attention to the edges of our metal as we bring them together. We don't want any gaps, and making sure we bend every part of our metal is super important for this. Bend these tabs in and press them together. Okay, our helmet is looking helmety, but we need to add part 16. I made sure to bend all the little bits of metal down first before attaching the detail on. But of course, you don't have to do this. Do whatever is easier for you. The instructions here say to bend the tabs, but personally, I bent mine flat. Sometimes it's okay to change what the instructions say, especially when it comes to tabs and how you want your model to look. Where things get a little bit more complicated are with things like part 17. Like our legs, this one's got a funky shape to it, but we need to think of it like a chest plate. Some parts are going to have a little bit more of a plump than others. Having a couple of rounded areas throughout this part will really help get that realistic look. I'm going to use a mixture of my fondant and dapping tools to try to achieve that. We can curl our arm areas separately and attach them like we've done with our legs, making sure that we have no gaps or as little as possible. I use my tweezers here to help me get the best shape as possible. Secure those sides and now we can add part 18 and our helmet. Attaching these assemblies to our body can be a little bit tricky because we're trying to attach two different tabs on the front and back at the same-ish time. Pre-bending our tabs is a good idea and also makes everything a lot easier. I highly recommend it. We can move this guy front to back and with a little bit of luck, we can secure the tabs too. Wow, our knight is really coming along, but right now he has a bit of a flesh wound. Uh, let's get to our final parts. Starting with our sword, we attach our blades first, then roll part 27 into a can. Make sure to roll part 27 with the tabs on the top side. Otherwise, you'll look like me and have to rebend the entire piece. Attach our parts with a twist, and we're good to move on to our arms. The arms are very similar to our legs, but with more leaf parts. These parts need to be bent so that the edges match all along the sides. Use the rolling method from before, but I recommend going from the middle here, and that will really help get a good shape throughout the entire piece. To hide our tabs, we can bend our tabs inward, then slide them into place. This makes the tabs into almost hooks, allowing us to secure the tabs a lot easier. Remember, we don't want to attach the lower part of part 30 just yet until we get to part 31. That's because part 30 fits over 31. Once everything's shaped, we place these two guys together, 
bend our tabs, and now we can shape our hand by bending one side down of part 32. Then, by using the edge as a reference, we can match up the center piece and secure our tabs here along the sides. A couple of more bends, and our arms are looking awesome. Now, let's finish up these last little bits of detail and see how this thing looks. And there we have it, the Templar Knight from the Metal Earth Premium Series line. This build was a lot more complicated than I was expecting, especially with the back leg detail and arm details that we had to form. Uh, getting everything into its proper shape was definitely a trickier than I was expecting, especially because this one's recommended for beginners out there that are looking to get into the whole Metal Armor series. Now, overall, I would say this was a fun build to do, but if you're looking to get into Metal Armors, I would definitely check out some of the Japanese armors before getting into this one. This one is definitely challenging, and for a beginner, it might be a little bit too hard, and and make turn you away from the whole hobby. So definitely take your time with this model. And if you love history, I would go ahead and say check it out. And now quickly, looking at the back here, what does all of this bent stuff mean? What does that little bent area in here actually mean? Let's see if we can get a little bit better of an adjustment there for you, GB1. There we go. What does all of that have to do with the Templar Knights and 3D metal model bending? Well, Groovers, if you remember back in the beginning, we had something, it was a wooden crate area. And from there, we actually went to an old train station. And from that train station to here, and everything had bent metal in it. Everything had bent metal in one other thing, British relevance. And that means we need to go to a British pub to figure out this whole mystery, but not just any British pub, the Elephant and Castle. Now, what does that actually have to do with anything? That's a great question. Let's see if we can figure out exactly what that could be. Sorry, my friend. Quick question. What do you know about 3D metal models, metal, and time travel? Until next time, keep building.